Okay guys, so we're going to work on our electric field investigation. So big time objective is to understand the factors that go on and affect an electric field. So the resource, main resource that we have is all right, the FET simulation, which we have the link here. So if you guys click on the blue hyperlink, it'll open it up for you. Now, simple background, electric field is the physical field that surrounds electrically charged particles and exerts force on all other charged particles in the field, either attracting them or repelling them. The electric field is a vector having both magnitude and direction, which you're going to see in, in a few moments. Okay, now this direction of the electric field is defined as the direction that a positive test charge would accelerate. The electric field, the symbol for that, or the variable would be capital E. It is defined in an equation E equals K times Q divided by R squared. The electric field is measured in either newtons per coulomb or volts per meter. K is still all right, the same constant you would have in Coulomb's law, the 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. So procedure, open the simulation. Then we're going to turn on the grid by clicking the box next to grid. And then we're going to put a positive charge onto the grid from the table on the bottom. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to turn on the grid like so. And we are going to put a positive test charge on the field. When we do, you're going to observe this. All right, so just like we had shown from the video and I had explained to you guys before, positive charges, all right, and they have an electric field that radiates outward from it. So, what else did they want? They wanted us to, therefore, take a screenshot of this. They wanted us to take a screenshot and then paste it here. So, what, how do you do a screenshot, guys? Uh, on your Chromebooks, you're going to hit Control, and I believe it's like the button above the 6. All right, it's the button above the 6. It's like the little box with the two... Uh, you know, straight lines above it or next to the right of it. So you would hit control that when you do this. So if I hit control print screen, okay, and I go in here and I paste it, you're going to get a big picture that pops up. How do you paste control V? Then if you double click on it, these black little border things pop up if you double click on it and now that is how we can crop this so we don't need all of that all right we want our our charge in the center and then we want some of the lines that radiate outward so we get an understanding that yeah that's good that's what's going to happen then you can click out of it off on the side and now you can kind of move and drag this to make it a little bit bigger You're going to do the same thing now with a negative charge. So they said, okay, well, put the positive charge back. So how do I, how do, I do that? You, you click on the positive charge in the grid, and you bring it back to the little table down at the bottom. And then let go of your click, and it's gone. Now they said to do the same thing with the negative charge. So you're going to click on the negative little blue piece here, drag it into... All right, our field, our grid here, and oh, snap. Now it's good. Now you should see the field lines going directly towards it. So control your print screen or however it is. Guys, I don't know if it, what it is on a Mac or if it's easier. Uh, whatever your computer is at home, if you don't know how to do that, uh, you you know would have to Google search it. Google search how to screenshot on an HP, whatever, or on a Dell, blah, blah, blah. So I'm print screening this. I go down, right, in this little box. I'm going to paste it, control V, double clicking on it so I can crop to uh, a size that is more suitable. I don't need anything too crazy there. And then you can. Click off to the side, then you can click on it again to 
increase the the, uh, the size. Okay, so like what we had, uh, were shown in the video, all right, the field lines radiate outward from a positive charge, and they're going to radiate inward towards the negative. Hmm? So number seven asks, how does the charge affect the direction of the electric field? Well, basically you're going to just say, all right, positive charge, the field goes away. Negative charge, the field goes towards it. Positive charge, the field goes away. The negative charge, the field goes towards it. And number eight, how does the electric field direction and the direction of the electric force, how are they related? So we can go in and we can do this. Okay, this I'm just clicked on this little sensor, dude. And notice what direction is it pointing? It's pointing towards, all right, the center. All right. Well, what if we got rid of this dude and put a positive guy in? Now, what direction is it? Okay, so the force is going to be in the same direction as the electric field. All right, the, they're directly proportional. So the force will be in the same direction as the electric field. So the force is in the same direction as the electric field. Now number nine says, we're going to press the reset button on the bottom right hand side. And we're going to turn off electric fields. We're going to keep the grid on. Now what? Now it says pull out a positive charge and put it on a major axis. And then we're going to pull out a sensor from the bottom. And the red arrow represents the electric field vector. Move it around the screen. Describe what happens to the magnitude of the electric field. So here we go. Put a positive dude out here on um, one of the major white lines or these, you know, thicker lines out of here. If I put it, let's say, there. I like this one, this spot right here. Now it says take a sensor, pull it out, and drop it. Now notice, guys, what happens to the size of the vector? All right, what do they ask? They want to know, move the sensor around and describe what happens to the magnitude of the electric field. Nope. So we're looking at the magnitude of the electric field. So what happens at the farther you go away? Get smaller. Now as you get closer, does it increase? Do you think it's increasing at the same rate? So, so well, how would how would I know? Well, basically, like let's count. You guys see like the the solid, the more solid or prominent lines here on the grid. So let's say I move it like one one grid box. All right, we can kind of just visually take a look at it. Observe how do you see the size of the arrow change? All right, so from here to here, I didn't really see much change, right? Okay, well, from this guy to this guy. Okay, I saw more of a change. What about from here to here? Do you think it was the same amount or maybe a tiny bit more? All right, well, what about from this guy to this guy? It's, it's increasing. I don't think it's the same amount. Whoa. 
So from now it really increased. What about from this guy to the next one? Sheesh is right. Um, so it definitely increases way more the closer you get to it. Wow. Yeah, it's like it, it's going off here. It is popping off. I don't know if that's even a saying. Is that a saying? Help? No? I don't know. Either way. All right, so guys, what were we saying? Move the sensor around the screen. Describe what happens to the magnitude of the electric field. So you guys are going to just explain what you're seeing. What happens to the magnitude of the electric field? Okay, so as I'm doing it, you guys can answer just based off of what you observe. Basically, what's happening to the red arrow? So everybody got what they needed? Yerp. Now number 14 says, click the box next to values. And this displays the strength of the electric field in voltmeters. Values, done, there it is. Okay. And what else do they want? We're going to place the sensor on the same major axis. It says Y, but I'm going to do the X axis. And then it says, note the scale at the bottom right of the screen. Okay, so we got to do this. We put the sensor. It's on the same all right, horizontal line as all right, their charge. And note, see how down here this says 1 meter? So 1 meter is like two of these boxes. All right, we got to keep that in mind. Now, it wants us to move the sensor to the distances shown in the table and then record the electric field strength at each distance. So, at 0.5 meters, 0.5 meters is half of a meter or it's 50 centimeters. So, you can do this one of two ways. All right, if you were paying attention to the scale down here at the bottom, Two of these bigger boxes is equivalent to one meter. So, so since this dude is chilling all right, on the very, very center, I put it right here like on the center of one of those boxes. Scoot up just a tiny bit. Okay, I would say that's rather centered. You have to do something similar. So think about it. If this from here to here is one meter, half of the meter would be there. So we can do that. So instead of it being here, we can go to half a meter. Okay, it looks about on the centered piece. So what do I get there? I get a value of 36.9 voltmeters. Okay, for one meter, okay, I'm going to move another half a meter, so it should be about there. I'm looking at about 9.09. .09. Okay, then you're going to go 1.5. So another half a meter. Looks about centered there. 4.06. Two meters, so another half a meter. Get it to be about centered. And I'm at about 
And then now this one's three, not two and a half. So I got to not just go to this piece. It would be to here. And I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little tape measure guy. I'm going to put it on the same spot right above the positive charge. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag it out. It should be roughly 300 centimeters. Okay, yep, so 300 centimeters divided by 100, that'd be 3 meters. So at 3 meters, we are looking at about 1, just 1 voltmeter. Well, they said 1.00, 0, so I'm going to use that. Voltmeter. Okay, so now, based off of that data, based off of that data, Describe the relationship between the distance and the electric field. Okay, so guys, again, what are the two kinds of relationships that we've dealt with pretty much all year? Direct and inverse. Direct means as one thing goes up, what happens to the other? It also goes up by the same. Inversely would be as one value increases, the other decreases. So what's going on here? What am I? Is my distance increasing each time? Yeah. Yes, we, we were increasing the distance. And then what was happening to the electric field strength? It was decreasing. So this is an inverse relationship. Now, i uh, got a question. I got a question, right? What did we do with our distance? Did we double it in this first one? We went from 0.5 to 1. That's double it, correct? So what about what's true going on here? So what is true between these two dudes? Right? If from the 0.5 to 1... Right, what do we do? We doubled. D, B, we doubled. What happened to the electric field strength? Well, what if I divide out real quick? What if I divide this 36.9 and I divide it by 9.09? .09? What do you think I'm going to get? About 4.06. Now you're not you're not writing this. I just want to show this. Okay. What if I triple my original distance? So I would go from, instead of 0.5 to 1. Now I'm 0.5 to 1.5. So now this one is triple my original. Good no good God that's awful. Okay. So what am, I'm going to divide this 36.9 and I'm going to divide it by this 4.06, what do I get there? About a 9.088 or a 9.09. .09. So guys, when we were doing Coulomb's Law, when we doubled the distance, what, what happened to the force? It reduced by four times. We just tripled the distance. What happened to the electric field strength? it went up or decreased by nine times. When we doubled the distance, the field strength decreased by four times. Hmm. Let's see, do you guys see the pattern yet? So 0.5 to two, how many times greater? That's four times, yeah? So when we increase the distance by four times, 
what should this decrease by? Well, when we doubled it, it decreased by 4. When we tripled it, it decreased by 9. So maybe you'll see the pattern after this. So what is the 36.9 divided by 2.27? Good Lord, that is an awful 16.25. So this is essentially the same way it uh, reacts or the same way um, it's related, I guess, to, to Coulomb's Law, where Coulomb's Law was an inverse square law all the way up at the tippity top. All right, they gave us the equation that E is equal to K times Q, the charge, over R squared. So since distance is on the bottom and it's squared, we are decreasing by the square of how much whatever we increase by. So since we doubled it, what's 2 squared? 4. So we decreased by 4 times. We, we tripled the distance. What's 3 squared? 9. We reduced it by 9 times. When we quadrupled the distance, we decreased by 16 times. Okay, so what is this one going to be? What is 0.5 to 3? How far is that, right? So 0.5, double, triple, quadruple. 2.5 would be 5 times as much. This would be 6 times as much. So if this is 6 times as much, wow, that was a, not a good 6. This pencil is not easy to use. So if we increase the distance to six times the original, what should we be reduced by? Well, what's six squared? 36. And if I literally take this 36.9 and divide it by here, I'm getting 36.9, which is pretty spot on. Okay, so you see the pattern. So we're going to just edit this slightly. There is an inverse relationship between the distance and the electric fields. We're going to change it, all right? inverse relationship between the distance or the electric field and the distance squared. We could even say the electric field strength. It's fine. There's an inverse relationship and the distance squared. Because if we just said inverse, it would still be like directly like, or I don't want to say directly, but it would be in, in similar increments. Um, the next thing, all right, we move it one meter away. All right, we're going to move the electric field sensor to a distance of one meter away from the positive charge. Okay, so this is what we got to do. And move this dude to one meter away. This is the value we get, right? This 8.96. Add another positive charge. How does the field strength change? So if I take another positive charge and I just plop it right on top, what just happened? It increased by how much? Two. It doubled. Okay, so when we add enough, so you would say that the field strength doubled. All right, when we add two negative charges on top of them, so there's two positive charges there currently, so if we add one negative charge, it goes back to the original, and if we add another one on top, it should be, it should be zero if I can get it to sit properly. All right, it should be it should be zero, um, and so we describe the relationship between the charge and the electric field. They are directly proportional. They are directly proportional. So, <clears throat> when you have multiple charges on top of one another, 
such as right. Well, let's let's go back to this for a second. Okay, let's get this first guy directly on top or as best as we can. Okay, and then we add the two negatives on top. Get right on top. All right, I'm getting a electric field strength of 0.00 or 0 0.02. It should be zero. All right, the positive and negative charge should cancel out each other there as far as the field strength is concerned. So the field strength went to zero or should be zero. Now, <clears throat> let's go back for a second. Describe the relationship between charge and electric field. So let's get rid of them negatives for a hot second. And one of the positives. So we got 8.96. Got another one on there. You multiply that, okay, you're going to get the same, you're going to get this value. So you doubled the field strength when you doubled the amount of charge. If we tripled the amount of charge, okay, right about there, we tripled the electric field strength. So that is just a directly proportional relationship. You can just say electric field, or you can say electric field uh, strength. Either one of those is fine. Either one of those is fine. All right. So, guys, that would give us our answers to all right, what we needed to go about and solve for in this. Obviously, you should have moved the sensor around to describe what happens to the magnitude of the charge. Um, magnitude of the charge is going to be, um, like we said before, all right, we want the charge of this guy, and how is this related? Okay, the closer it gets, the, the larger the uh, electric field gets. It gets exponentially large. All right, so you just type in that, and you guys should be Good to go. I believe we answered all the other questions here.